kind of used to sit down on, it kind of disappeared from me. You, you what now? Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. Oh, you got it? Okay, thank you, man. Yeah. Hey, listen, while they're grabbing that, of course, y'all know all the stuff we got going on, but I just want to reiterate. Um, of course, the whole month of August, we're doing some special stuff. Um, our children are getting ready to go back to school, so to get them in gear for the year, somebody make some noise for that. That's, yeah, I'm, I'm sick and tired of my light bill being high, my refrigerator being empty. And um, I'm so ready for them to go back, and um, I can't wait for them to get back in school. Um, so with that being said, what we're going to be doing is um, some little fun stuff with them as they get, get ready to go back, some game night stuff. So the children will be back in, or the children will be over in the children's church um, each night of this month after worship and praise, and our youth will go back to the fellowship hall. So they got some fun stuff they'll be doing back there. Um, listen on next week, y'all. Um, y'all know one of the things that uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, we, we really want to do and be intentional about is uniting um, churches and bringing people together in our community. Um, and so next week, we're going to have um, Pastor Michael Childs in Christ Central of Lake Butler here with us on next week. Amen. So, amen. So excited about that. Um, they'll be here next week. And so let's be here ready to worship God and to honor God. Um, again, like y'all know, like I said, one of the things we want to do is be intentional about bringing churches together. Um, and one of the things people always say, you know, churches need to come together, churches need to come together. And what we want to do is, is at, least, at least provide those opportunities for, for that to happen. Um, and so we're going to be doing that. And actually what we're going to be doing each month or each, um, each month, we're going to have at least one Wednesday where we're going to have a local church um, that is predominantly of a different culture to come and worship with us on one of the Wednesday nights. So we're going to do that. We're going to have some great time. And, and hopefully this will be something we can do for quite some time. Um, you know, and that's something that I really, really want to be able to do. Um, so keep that in mind. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. Um, also, with going back to school, um, my barber, Anthony, um, he's having um, um, at Distinguished Cuts Barbershop. If y'all know anybody, any kids that need haircuts um, on August the 9th and the 10th, I think that is next Tuesday and next Wednesday. He's offering $1 haircuts, $1 haircuts to kids um, next week. So um, I'm, doing, I'm doing something myself. I'm going to pay out of my pocket. I'm going to pay for 25 kids um, that need a haircut. So I'm going to be putting that out there. Um, I encourage y'all, if you want to sponsor four or five kids to get haircuts, no matter who they are, black, white, brown, no matter who they are, he's, of course, licensed and able to cut. Um, and so that's going to happen. So I'm sure it's going to be booked up and packed. So get your um, young people in to get their haircuts. And then also, make sure I'm reading this right, um, on August the 9th, he's going to have walk-ins for quick weave. I don't know what that is. Um, but you get quick weave for $25. Um, so if y'all know some young girls that need some quick weave, um, he's going to be doing walk-ins on, on August the 9th for $25. And then on Friday, August the 12th, um, by appointment only. And you can just give him a call and hit him up on Facebook. Um, somebody help me out after church and let me know what quick weave is, because I thought all weave takes a little bit. What is a quick weave? It's just glue on real quick? Okay, all right, so. Okay, all right, so whatever that is, y'all let somebody know about it, get the word out to them. But again, like I say, I'm going to be a blessing to some young people to help them to get some haircuts on next week as they go back to school. So keep that in mind. Um, also, uh, it was something else I had that I, I wanted to mention. Oh, yes. Also, next Thursday, next Thursday morning, for anybody that can help out, anybody that, that people that wake up on the right side of the bed. Let me make sure I say that right. If you wake up on the right side of the bed on August the um, it would be the 11th. We're going to be having our back-to-school outreach again here at the church. So uh, if, if you wake up on the right side of the bed, because let me tell you something. One thing I've learned about a lot of church folk, a lot of church folk don't wake up on the right side. What, 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 I mean, what I mean is, what I mean is, is, you know, some people when you talk to them in the morning, you don't know who you're talking to. You don't know if you need to wait about 12 o'clock to talk to them. You know, so, but if you wake up on the right side, please, um, um, we need some help. We're going to be giving out donuts, um, praying with people, 
um, doing um, juice and coffee for people locally that's going back to school here in our community. So if you can help out with that, we want to be a blessing to our community because we believe God has placed us here for our community. Amen? Amen. One other thing I want y'all to be praying about, I go to meet with um, um, our, our builder um, that we're already looking at to um, build our next building on tomorrow at 9 o'clock. So I'm asking you, amen, I'm asking y'all to be praying about that. Um, I've been up for the last two weeks, and my wife will tell you I've been getting on her nerves. I've been up drawing and, 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 and setting out um, different layouts for the new building and just, and just kind of looking at how we can set that whole thing up and how we can get that thing together so we can have all the different things in the building that we really want to be able to have. We want to be able to have, of course, a restaurant in it. We want to be able to have a full fitness center in it. Um, we want to be able to have um, an indoor football field. Um, at least a three quarters of a football field so that our kids can play flag football because flag football is not 100 yards, it's 60 yards um, and then two end zones. So we want to be able to do that and then not just that, we also want to be able to have where our kids can have three full basketball courts indoors. Amen, somebody. I, I, have, I have crazy faith. I'm telling you, I have crazy faith. Um, and I just believe God for that kind of stuff. Uh, when we built this church, I had crazy faith. A lot of people thought we was crazy, and a lot of people thought I was crazy when I was saying what we was going to be doing. And, um, and then after we built this building, I said that I was done, but God said something a little different. I said, I don't want to build no more buildings. I'm done with it. Um, but God obviously has something else in mind. You know, one thing, I've, one thing God has been telling me for the last few days, if you could do anything for God on your own, it's not of God. Do y'all get that? Anything you could do for God by yourself, God didn't tell you to do it. Anytime God tells you to do something, you need him to help you to be able to do it. And I know we're going to need his help. We ain't got the money. We ain't got the resources. But God is going to make a way. Amen. And so we believe God for this. So y'all be praying tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Um, we're going to start taking this long journey um, for this next phase of our ministry and um, doing what God has called us to do. All right, well, listen, y'all, y'all know we're starting a new series tonight, um, so I'm going to ask you to get your Bibles out and turn with me to Romans, the 12th chapter. Um, I don't know if y'all saw it, and, and we're going we're to kind of do this to kind of save a little bit on paper and ink. Um, we put um, the, I don't know if y'all saw the fill-in notes on the church's Facebook page. We put the fill-in notes on the church Facebook page, and if you have access you can go to the church Facebook page right now, and that, that really helps us out as far as um, not having to use up a lot of ink and a lot of paper. And what you can do is you can copy, um, copy those fill-in notes and paste them in whatever you use for notes on your phone. I only got an iPhone, so I only know we have notes. I don't know what Androids have. I don't know what y'all use on Android. Forgive me. I, I love y'all, but I don't know what y'all use. I don't know what you use. My, um, my grandma... The other day, she needed me to do something on her phone, and she had some kind of note or something, and I didn't know what to do with it because I'm just, I just don't know. Uh, but if you, if you have, whatever phone you have, you should be able to copy and paste. paste. Who in here, you saw the fill-in notes already? Who saw the fill-in notes? Okay, a few of y'all. Okay, again, I, wa I want you to know that's something we're going to be doing every Wednesday at 12 o'clock. The notes will come on there, the fill-in notes, and all you need to do is just, I think, like I know on the iPhone, and y'all help me out. On, on other phones, you, um, I don't know what you do, but on an iPhone, you should be able to just hold your finger and copy will come up, and then you can copy that whole thing. Is that, that That's what they do on y'all phones too? Okay, we love all different types of phones, I'm just saying, and other, di other different types of, of methods of what y'all have, okay? I'm just saying, but I'm just, I'm just telling y'all there's something annoying about an Apple. I, I don't know what it is. It's just, it's just something... It's just something annoying about Apple, I'm just telling y'all, all right? Um, but yeah, you should be able to do that, and that's just something we're going to do. We try to, of course, stay on the cutting edge with technology. I know a lot of people, a lot of churchy people, they, they kind of say this is too technological, this is too advanced. But I promise you, if you go with your kids to school, they ain't using chalkboards no more. I went into class with Patrick a couple years ago, and I said, where's a chalkboard? And the teacher said, you ain't been in class in a long time, have you? They got smart boards, they're touching screens, they're doing all this kind of stuff. Many, most times it's only the church that's real far behind. 
most times it's just the church. All right, so what we're going to do is um, uh, we're going to look at Romans 12 chapter, verses 17 through 18. I'm going to ask y'all to stand to your feet for the reading of God's word. We're still dealing with relationships, but particularly uh, we're going to be dealing with conflict resolution for the next few weeks. And we're going to get into some really, 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 really good stuff. And I think, it, I think it'll really, really help you, especially if you are in a relationship, if you're in a family, um, you know, if you work in a workplace, um, if, if you're in a church, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, um, this message on conflict resolution, I think, will really help, help you out tremendously. So we're going to be talking about how to resolve conflicts in families and workplaces and you name it. And I really think it's going to help you. So, and I promise you, take good notes because I think this will be some good stuff that you can come back to. All right, so bring up those verses for me, Shonda. Um, if you don't have, if you guys don't have, going, um, if you guys don't have the New Living Translation, um, this is what we'll read. So, um, the, okay, it's, uh, we don't have the New Living Translation. The New Living Translation. <clears throat> we're going we're gonna to be reading this out of the New Living Translation verses 17 and 18. So if you don't have that, you can look up on the screen and we'll get this together. All right, so let's read these two verses together. Let's read. Never pay back evil for evil. Do more. Oh, I'm sorry. Never. Let's, let's do it again from the, from the top. Let's read again. I'm sorry. Let's read. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. All right, y'all got that? All right, let's bring up verse 17 again, and we're gonna, uh, I'll read it out loud. Y'all just follow along with me. It says this. It says, never pay back evil with more evil. That, that's really good right there. Do not pay back evil with more evil. I think King James says, don't repay evil for evil. Then it says, do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Then verse 18 says this, do all that you can to live in peace, not just with your friends and your family, but with everyone. Amen? So we're going we're to begin tonight talking about conflict resolution, and we're going to get into some good stuff. So while you're standing, let's pray, and let's hear what the Lord has to say to us. Father, we thank you. We bless you tonight. Thank you so much for your grace. Thank you so much for your mercy. Thank you so much for your love. I pray that you speak to us tonight as only you can. We'll forever give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Um, and I promise y'all this is going to be really, really good. Um, or at least I think it is. I think it's going to help us in our relationships. It's going to help us in our family relationships. It's going to help us in our church uh, relationships, on your job, um, in school, um, because here's the reality, y'all. If you are living and breathing, eventually at some point in every relationship you have, you're going to experience some type of conflict. There's no way you can avoid it. No way you can avoid it. And one thing that is true is that the Bible gives us certain parameters. The Bible gives us certain guidelines on how we should operate when conflict takes place. Whenever conflict happens, there are certain parameters and there are certain guidelines on how we should operate. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that we operate in the way that God teaches us to operate so that we can have a productive relationship with God and have a productive relationship with people. Um, and so, you know, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands if y'all had any conflict with anybody in your family in the last three days because I don't want to, you know, make it too obvious in here. But I'm sure I prophesy, I'm sure just about everybody in this room, you've had conflict in your family in the last three or four days, probably the last three or four hours. Okay, so um, we want to talk about how to, how to deal with it. But before we do that, I want to talk about the damage that unresolved conflict does. The damage that unresolved conflict does. Now, I want you to see how unresolved conflict, it brings a damage um, to certain areas in your life. The first thing is that it blocks my, re my fellowship with God. It blocks my fellowship with God. Okay, you can't have close fellowship with God and be out of fellowship with others. Do y'all get that? There is no possible way you can have close fellowship with God 
and be out of fellowship with others. You can't, you can't be mean, hateful, um, you, you know, just nasty, just, just you, I mean, you name it. There's no possible way you can have a bad relationship with, with, with people and expect that you're going to have a great relationship with God. One of, the, one of the things about Christianity is Christianity is built on the cross. The cross has two beams, correct? The cross has two beams. One beam goes up and down. It's a vertical beam, which teaches us that we should, of course, have a good relationship between us and God. But then there's also a horizontal beam on the cross, which teaches us that we're to also have a healthy relationship with people. A lot of people do real good in one or the other. A lot of people do real good in their relationship with God, but just a bad relationship with people. And, and, and a lot of people, they, they, they really, they, they, they wonder why sometimes that they don't really move further in their relationship with God, and they don't go deeper in their relationship with God, and they don't really grow. It's simply because if you don't have a good relationship with people, God is not going to allow you to go deeper in him and further in him because Christianity is more than just you having a relationship with God. It's about you having a healthy relationship with, with, with people as well. The Bible says, how can you say that you love God whom you've never seen, but you hate your brother whom you see every day? The Bible goes on and says that the world would know that we are his disciples by the love that we show. So, so there's a correlation there that is that if we're going to have a great relationship, if we're going to have a great relationship with God, we must also make sure we have a great relationship with people. So when you have unresolved conflict, it blocks my fellowship with God. All right, here's another thing. Number two, it prevents answered prayer. When you have unresolved conflict in your relationship, ain't no need you praying. You might as well just, 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 just be quiet. Because the, Bi the Bible even tells us, and especially, you know, the Bible even tells us, like, for us husbands, and, and, and the husbands, we need to definitely get this and take heed to this. First Peter, the Bible tells us for husbands that if we don't treat our wives right, that God is not going to answer our prayers. The Bible says if you don't treat your wife right, God will not hear your prayers. Ain't no need, ain't no need me praying if I don't treat first lady right. No need me praying because God's like, just hush your mouth because I'm not going to hear it. It prevents answer prayers. You as, a, you as a mother, you as, a, you as a, a woman, you as a man. If you don't have, if you don't have a, a, your, your relationships and you have unresolved conflict, it prevents answer prayer. And then here's, here's another thing that it does. It hinders your happiness. It hinders your happiness. You, you can't have real good happiness and joy if you've got unresolved conflict with people. Because you, you know, you're dodging them. You're scared if you're going to run into them in Walmart. Am I going to see them at the game? Am I going to see them in Spires? Am I going to see them somewhere? You, you take different routes so you don't run into them and you don't see them. And, and you, not, you can't be happy living like that, having to dodge people. You can't be happy living a, living a life to where you, you have to be careful about being around people. You can't, you, there's no happiness in that, man. When you have this unresolved conflict, and many people, they have unresolved conflict that goes on for years and years and years. I mean, there's people that sit in churches. They have unresolved conflict with people for 20 years. For 20 and 25 years, and not just in church, I'm, and even in, in homes, even in our homes, you could be living in the house, you could be sleeping in the same bed with somebody, and you have this unresolved conflict, and it eats you alive, you have no joy, you have no peace, you have no happiness, it drives you to certain addictions, it drives you to certain secret sins, it drives you to do all this stuff that you become embarrassed about, because you don't resolve these conflicts that you know you need to resolve. And so it brings a lot of damage to our lives. It brings a lot of damage, and, 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 it, and it hinders your happiness. I don't know about y'all, I want to be happy. I want to be, be able to smile and not fake smile. I want to be able to have a real smile. I want to be able to have real joy. I want to be able to have real love when I'm around people. I don't want this fake happiness, man. I want to, you know, I just want to be happy. And that's what Kurt said, I just want to be happy. Dun, 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 something. I wish I could sing it. I sang it to y'all. 
I just want to be happy. So those are some things that happens when we have unresolved conflict. So, so you know, let's let's talk a little bit because I don't I don't I don't want to stay talking about um, the cause. I want to I want to I want to deal with the cure. So I don't want to stay on the cause of 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 and what happens um, when unresolved conflict takes place. I want to I want to deal more so with the cure. So let's look at some biblical steps to resolving conflict. I seriously doubt we'll, we'll finish all of them tonight. Uh, we'll pick them up the next time we, 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 we come together. But um, let's talk a little bit about some, some seven biblical steps to resolving conflict. Y'all ready for this tonight? All right, so let's get into some good stuff. Y'all get some good notes. All right, the first thing, if we're going to resolve conflict, is you must take the initiative. Take the initiative. You, not wait for the other person. I'm talking to you. If you have unresolved conflict, quit waiting on somebody to come and apologize to you. Because they may never come. You now have a responsibility because when we receive a word from God, it, it, it causes us to have a, a different level of responsibility. You now have a responsibility that now that you have heard God tell you that you need to take the initiative, Quit waiting on somebody to come and apologize to you about something and you take the initiative and you go sit down and you talk with them and you reason together and you get the thing straight, you get the thing right and quit waiting on somebody to come and talk to you. God says, no, you take the initiative. Do y'all not understand that um, conflict, it, seldom, it is seldom resolved accidentally. It's seldom resolved accidentally. I mean, like, for instance, if, you, if you're in a relationship, let's say, I'm going to give you an example. If, you, if you're a husband and a wife, and you, you, you have some unresolved conflict in your relationship, about 99.9% .9 of the time, it, gets, it, it, it rarely gets fixed by doing nothing. Most times, if not by all times, for it to get resolved, somebody's got to apologize. Somebody's got to ask for forgiveness. Somebody has to take, to a, take the initiative. Let me, let me tell you something. I know we say this a lot, but it's really not true. Time doesn't heal anything. If, if, if t let, me, let, me, let, me give you, let me give you an example. If time healed anything, you could just go and sit in the emergency room and never go back and see the doctor. There's no need in going back to see the doctor, just, if you, if, if, you know, if you really, really just, no, you need to go back there and get, get the medicine, get the prescription, or get them to diagnose what's going on with you, get, get whatever you need to get so you can get it fixed. T time doesn't heal anything. You have to take the initiative. You have to sit down. You have to talk. You need to do whatever you need to do, and the only way to resolve a conflict is to face it. If you got a, if you got a situation in your relationship, if it's with your daughter, if it's with your son, if it's with your brother or your sister, you need to sit down and resolve it and talk it out. Some of you, 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 got, you got situations between you and your siblings. And, and, and it's not going to get fixed automatically. I know people that's, that's siblings, and they've been siblings for 30 and 40 years and got alts with each other and then had these alts with each other forever. You got, you got to resolve it. Some, how do you resolve it? You need to, maybe you need to sit down and talk it over. Maybe you need to sit down with somebody else to help you to resolve it. Maybe you need some counseling. Maybe you need somebody as a mediator between you and the person. I, t I, tell, I, tell, I, tell couples, I, was, I tell couples all the time, you know, who's going through stuff, and, and they come in and, they, and one of them come and talk to me. The first thing I, I say to them is I say, have y'all gone and got counsel about the situation? Have you talked to somebody about the situation? And a lot of times they say, well, I mean, the person will say to me, you know, I, I, I really don't see the need for that, and I really don't want to do that, or the other person doesn't want to do that. I say, well, I mean, good, <laughs> I mean, it ain't no such thing. I'd be like, well, good luck to you. Because if you're not willing to come together and talk it out, you're going to have a problem. You're going to have a problem. It, it, healing doesn't happen automatically. It doesn't happen automatically. Let me give you a verse. Matthew 5, 23 and 24. Listen to this. It says, so if you are presenting a sacrifice at the altar 
in the temple and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you, leave your sacrifice there at the altar. Go and be reconciled to that person. Then come and offer your sacrifice to God. Jesus said, if you got a situation between you and somebody else, don't ignore it. Doesn't matter if you're the offended or you are the offender. Oh, it's always your move. It's your move. It's your move. And when we're to do it, when we're to do it, we're, we're to do it at once, as soon as possible. Don't delay, don't postpone. Why should, why should, you might be saying, well, Pastor, why should I take the initiative? I was the one that was hurt. Why? Because Jesus tells you to do it. And your worship will be useless until you do. It'll be useless. I mean, this is, this is Bible. This is not something I made up. This is, this is the Bible. God says, okay, you take the initiative. You, you bust the move. You know, and a lot of people, a lot of people, they try to shout over this kind of, they try to shout over unforgiveness. Or they try to shout over bad relationships. Oh, I got a bad relationship, but I'm going to praise God. Me and my sister got a situation, or my brother, my kids, we got a, but I'm going to just praise God. God, like, just shut your mouth, and y'all need to go and talk. Go sit down somewhere, talk, talk this out, work this out, get this thing fixed. Then you come back and you give me worship. That's good preaching right there. That's good preaching right there. Because while, you sh while you're shouting, the devil is having a party. Because the devil, like, you're shouting, but it ain't getting even above your hairline simply because you got a conflict between you and somebody else and you're not taking the initiative to go and talk it out. I can't tell you how, how often, how often I be, I've been in prayer in years in my life. I've been in prayer and God says, okay, get your behind up and you go and you talk this situation out with this person. I'd be like, but God, I, I wasn't the one that really was in the room. God's like, I don't care. You be the bigger person. You be the bigger person in all of this. You, you have a great responsibility. You be the bigger person in this whole situation. And, and I go and I, talk, and, and I talk this thing out, or I, I go and we'll sit down and we'll reason and we'll talk about the conflict. And, and let me tell you how God works. It's almost, it's almost like instantaneously. That after you go and you make those kind of moves, it's like windows of heaven open up over your life. God open up doors for you. And I'd be like, my God, that's all it took. And, and you go and every time I go and resolve a conflict between me and somebody else, God will always pour out a blessing that just blows my mind. Because there's, there's always, there's always, because, because unresolved conflict, like I say, it blocks your prayer. It blocks your prayer. It's like, it's like your blessing is right at the door, but God can't open up the door because you got the conflict with this person. But as soon as you get that conflict fixed, it's like God then takes a key and unlocks the door and opens the door and you see a blessing there that you didn't see before. It was there all alone, but because you had unresolved conflict, it, it couldn't be open. Are y'all hearing me tonight? So you take the initiative. Oh, y'all might have shouldn't have came tonight. Because God's going to give you great responsibility on this message I'm giving y'all on this. So, so if you're married and you have an unresolved, you got unresolved conflict between you and your spouse, you need to go and talk it out. If you're in a relationship, you got unresolved conflict, you need to take the initiative. If you got a situation between you and a coworker, you need to go and take the initiative. If it's something between you and one of your, your kids, you and your daughter, you and your son, you need to take the initiative. Don't wait on the other person. Don't wait on the other person. You take the initiative to get the thing fixed. Are y'all hearing me tonight? I'm going to just give you a couple more. I know I'm not going to finish all of these. I'm going to give y'all just a couple more. Number two, you need to confess your part of the conflict. You need to confess what you did wrong. Because just about every conflict, I mean, two sides play a part in it. Both of you played a part in it, and you need to confess your part in the conflict. And here's the a, here's a thing about many times when sometimes we don't even know how to confess, and we don't know how to apologize to people. 
some of y'all, well, let me say, some of us, a lot of times when we go and apologize to people, we, we apologize to people, but we try to make the other person feel guilty. Let me give you an example. Well, I just want to say I, I'm sorry about what I said to you, and, you know, I'm really sorry about it. Uh, but, you know, you really didn't have to make me feel the way you made me feel. And you really didn't have to say the, what you said to me, and you really didn't have to do what you did to me. You, ain't, you are not apologizing. That is not an apology. That is, that is not the spirit of God. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? And, and I'm not going to ask you if you ever did it, but I'm telling you, some people do not even know how to apologize. We don't know how to apologize. We're going to, well, well I, I just didn't like the way you looked at me, and I saw the way you looked at Lucibel, and you looked at Lucibel one way, but when you looked at me, you looked at me a whole other way. And I just, I just had a bad, bad thing about it. I had a bad spirit about that. And you know, church folk, we know how to say stuff. Like, we can cuss you out without cussing you out, you know. <laughs> we, we, we can say stuff, and it's like cussing you out, but it ain't cuss words. Y'all know what I'm talking about? We, we can say stuff like, well, you have a blessed day. Y'all know what that means in the spirit, right? I'm blessed and highly favored. How are you? You cussing them out. You ain't, you ain't using spiritual jargon. You really cussing them out in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. I'm telling y'all, we, we got to do a better job when, even when we go to people. Quit trying to make the other person feel guilty because a lot of times what we do is we, we make the, the whole conflict even worse when we go to people. It'd be even worse after we met with them because we, we don't even know the whole process of how we should apologize to people. Just, just, just say you're sorry, show some contrite, show some, some broken heart, heartness, you know, just, just be sorry about the situation and quit trying to bring up what they did to you. They already know what they did to you. They don't need your help to bring it back to their memory. They don't need your help. They don't need your help. Your, your, your husband or your wife doesn't need any help for you to tell them what they said to you last night. They already know what they said to you. They already know what they say. They don't need your help to be a tape recorder to tell them all over again because you're doing nothing but raising up the temperature in the room. Just say you're sorry and move on and then allow them to say they're sorry and you move on and you get to where you need to be at in your relationship. There's an art in, in even apologizing, not trying to make the other person feel guilty. And that'll help us a lot in our relationships. That's just something to think about. That's just something, that's a, a Salah moment, like you see in Psalms. That's a Salah moment, just, some, just a pause moment to think about. When you go to somebody, just apologize and just leave it right there. Do not try to make them feel guilty about what they said or what they did to you. Because they're already wrestling with that in their own spirit and their own heart. Confess your part of the conflict. Well, what is something that goes with this? One thing I want y'all to get is that everybody has blind spots. Nobody's perfect. Everybody has blind spots. Nobody's perfect. Nobody. Um, I don't know what version, um, Shonda, we got. I, I gave you a version. I'm not even sure if it's in the computer. That's fine. Okay, that's good. This is, this is a verse I want y'all to get. Matthew um, 7 and verses 3 and 5. Y'all heard this before. It says, why do you notice the little piece of the dust in your friend's eye, but you don't notice the big piece of wood in your own eye? First, take the wood out of your own eye, then you will see clearly to take the dust out of your friend's eye. A lot of times we spend so much time trying to point out other people what they've done wrong, and we fail to realize we got a big cylinder block in our own eye we try to point out the, the speck of dust. I think the King James Version might use the speck um, in somebody else's eye. But in our, we got a big cylinder block in our eye. We're trying to point out something. That, that's, that's why, you know, God delivered me from this years ago. I, I don't point out other people's sins, man. I don't. There ain't no such thing as a big sin and a little sin, y'all. I'm, I'm quick. 
I want y'all to quit trying to think of sin as big sins and little sins. If the speed limit was 55 and y'all drove 56 today, don't y'all know that's in the same category as the person that murdered somebody? It's the same. It's in the same category. The liar is in the same category in, with, with somebody that, that stole something. Just confess your part in the conflict. Confess your part. And quit trying to point out the wrong in somebody else's life. And I think that'll help you. All right, I'm going to give you one more, and then we're going to stop. Um, I know the kids, they're probably still doing some fun stuff. We'll close out and um, hang out a little bit, um, and we'll let them do what they're doing for a little bit more. But let me just give you one more, and uh, we'll pick up the rest when we meet again. So number three on how to resolve conflict is listen for the hurt. Listen for the hurt. If you want to connect with people, it must start with their needs, not yours. Listen for the hurt. One of the things I'm learning, I'm 40 years old, and one of the things I'm, I'm just now learning is how to be a good listener. <clears throat> how to be a, if, if you want to have a good relationship, we talked a little bit about it in Sunday school with the men on Sunday about leading. If you want to have a good relationship, you got to learn to be a good listener. You got to learn to be a good listener. You got to learn to listen to the hurts of other people. Probably some, some, some people who are the most effective I've learned in ministry and just in life is people that sit and they really feel and they empathize and they hear the hurts of others. They hear the hurts of others. They're more concerned about your pain than they are about their pain. If you want to resolve conflict, listen for the hurt. Here's, here's a good verse for us, y'all. James 1 and 19. Listen to what it says. Be quick to listen. Be slow to speak and slow to get angry. Somebody said it so right. They said we have two ears and we have one mouth. We need to do twice as much listening as we do speaking. Quit getting in a hurry with what you say. You know, th th this, this is a key to diffusing conflict. Understand where people are coming from, their circumstances, their background, their temperament. And, and we must be considerate of the hurts and the pain of other people. Listen for the hurt. Listen, you know, listen, listen, to, listen to what they're going through. Listen to, to what's happening in their life. If we really, really want to know how to be people, that know how to resolve conflict, we got to understand that people are hurting, man. People, people are in pain, and so we have to do our best to listen and to feel what they're going through. And then once we do that, then pray with them and pray for them. You know, my, my prayer, my prayer, you know, in, in, in we, our church, we, in, after almost being in existence for 20 years, is that we, we have, you know, really kind of... Um, avoided a lot of conflict in our church. I mean, we, we've, we haven't really had, like, major conflict in our church, and I'm very, very grateful of that, you know, because I got a lot of friends, I got a lot of buddies, and they call me up, and they be like, man, it's, um, you know, kids in here. They be like, we got hell going on in our church, man. They be like, we got hell going on in our church. They, they be like, man, we got stuff going on. And one of the, thing, one of the things I've learned, and one of the things I just kind of picked up, and one of the things I've just learned in ministry is that the anointing flows from the head down. And a lot of times there's conflict in the church house because there's a lot of conflict in the leader's house. And I learned this early in ministry. I learned, you know what, that if we're going to have a church that's in peace, that's in harmony, that's in love, me and my wife's house has got to be in good harmony. We can't be disconnected. We can't be mad at each other. We can't be fighting with each other. We can't be arguing with each other. We can't, we can't be just going at each other and throwing plates and busting TVs and putting holes in, in walls and, and throwing spoons and forks at each other and cussing each other out and doing all of this stuff and getting to church and be like, how y'all doing? Just How y'all doing? Y'all doing good? It's just so good to be here. Just bless the Lord. We can't be faking like that. We, we realized early in ministry that, that 
if we're going to have harmony in the house, we got to have harmony in our house. And so our thing has always been, you know what? We're going to learn early how to resolve conflict. We're going to learn early how not to let stuff blow up. How not to allow things that start off as an as a ant mound turn into a mountain. Because if you ignore stuff long enough, it'll get bigger than what you really want it to be. Stuff don't just go away, y'all. You got to deal with it, man. You got to deal with it. And you people that want it, you people, if you're watching or if you're in this room and you want to one day get married and you think it's going to always be like it is on a Tyler Perry movie, it ain't going to be like that. Or, I mean, not a, t a Nicholas Sparks book or a movie. You think it's going to be like a walk in the clouds? You think it's going to be like a uh, message in a bottle? You think it's going to be like uh, the notebook? You think it's going to be like that all the time? You think it's going to be like that all the time? You think it's going to be like that, that all the time? You got bills. You got kids. You got stuff to deal with. You got health. You, got, you get sick. You don't feel good all the time. It ain't gonna always be like that. But when those things happen, you better know how to how, you better know how to deal with conflict. And one thing I'm learning is that a lot of people they don't know how to deal with conflict. They don't know how to deal with conflict. Conflict resolution. So again, these three things you got to remember. Bring up those three points we looked at tonight. You got to be somebody who takes the initiative. This week, the rest of this week, something's going to happen where something's going to happen between you and somebody else. You got to be able to take the initiative. Don't wait on the other person. Some of you, you waiting on somebody. Somebody told me something a couple years ago. They said, I'm waiting on somebody to come in and apologize to me. I looked at them. I said, Sister Gal, ain't happening. If they ain't done it now, it's been 20 years, they ain't done it, they ain't going to do it. They done went on with their life. You holding them hostage for something they done moved on from. But if it's something between you and you need to go and talk to them. You need to take the initiative. The second thing you need to do is you need to confess your part of the conflict. And then the third thing, you need to listen for the hurt. I believe God is helping us in these ways already tonight. This is just an introduction to this, but I believe God is already touching our heart and helping us in conflict. Amen? You play a little bit of that for me. Listen, I want us to stand. I want to pray for us tonight. We, um, we want to be people that, that know how to deal with conflict, man. Can I, can I tell y'all something? Can I, can, I, can I really, really tell y'all something? Cussing people out don't fix nothing. Cussing people out, telling them all, Give them a piece of your mind, you name it. I don't know what the latest word or latest phrase is. What's the latest phrase for somebody giving them a piece of their mind? I don't know. Cut. <laughs> yeah, just cuss them out. Just cuss them out. That don't fix nothing. That don't fix, yeah, slashing tires, busting windows, throwing bricks at houses. I ain't never seen that fix nothing. Never. And let me help y'all out with something. I know we live in a new age. We live in a new day. And, and y'all know me. I'm a social media person. I'm more of an Instagram and Twitter person, kind of getting away a little bit from Facebook. But, but let me tell y'all something. You telling somebody off on social media don't fix nothing. I've yet to, I've, I've yet to this day, I've yet to this day, See somebody fix a relationship over social media. It don't happen. It don't happen. That's not the correct way to deal with conflict resolution. You, you tell it, girl, I gave them peace of my mind on, on Facebook. I gave them peace of my mind on Instagram. I went at them on Snapchat. You ain't fix nothing. You think the other person read that and said, you're right. You're so right. I was wrong. I need to get it together. No, they didn't. I believe Jesus even knew 2,000 years ago. Jesus knew 2,000 years ago there'll be telephones, there'll be Instagram, there'll be Facebook. Jesus knew it. And that's why he still said, go to the person. 
Go to the person. Don't text them. Don't Facebook them. Don't FaceTime. You go to the person. You go. You go. You that are spiritual, go and, and you go and, 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 and fix the situation. Go and talk it out. Go and resolve the conflict. Don't send an email. Don't send a text. Don't send a post-it note. Don't do that. You sit and talk with the person. You don't fix a relationship over social media, over phone. You don't do it like that. I believe God is helping us. God is beginning to help us tonight. Some of us, we probably, you probably say, Pastor, I don't really need this. Well, this is a preemptive strike. This is preventive stuff for you. Keep it in a good place. Keep this stuff in your heart so when you do need it, you take it out. And you say, you know, I remember pastor said, yeah, I need to take the initiative in this situation. So you go and you say to the person, I'm sorry. I remember God, I remember God told us on this night, August the 3rd, 2016, that I need to listen to the hurt. I remember God told us on this night that I need to confess my part in, in the situation. So I'm confessing my part. I'm not trying to justify it. I'm saying what I did wrong without trying to justify it. Let's lift our hands to God. I want to pray. Father, we thank you tonight. You're helping us. You're helping us in our family relationships. You're helping us in our marriage relationships. You're helping us at home, helping us on the job. You're helping us in school. God, help us, God, to take the initiative. Help us to listen to the hurts of others. Help us to confess our part in, this, in the wrongdoing. God, and I pray that you help us to communicate with others without fussing, without cussing, without fighting. We won't cuss out our children and think it's godly. We won't, we won't say praise the Lord and hallelujah in church, but cuss out our family members at the house. That ain't of God. And then we, we wonder why our prayers are not answered. We wonder why we're not moving forward. Help us, oh God, in this area in our life. God, I thank you tonight. I, pray, I thank you for relationships that will be mended. I thank you, God, for work relationships, church relationships, family relationships that will be mended because of this word tonight. Let this word travel not only from this place, but let it travel, God, all around. God, we love you, we thank you, we bless you, and we give your name glory, honor, and praise. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's give God a big praise tonight. I, um, while we're standing, I want, is my phone back there? Hopefully. You ain't got to turn on the internet back there. I, th I think I'll still be able to pull it up. Um, my, my wife sent me a message, um, and some of y'all probably are aware of it. Um, a young girl that, um, that played in our um, victory basketball, um, they just found out she has cancer. Um, her name is Brianna Short. Her mother's name is, is Star Knight. Many of y'all know Star, and um, they're from Lake Butler. But um, I'm going to read the message I, I, we got. She um, just wants you guys to pray for her. Um, she just found out her daughter, that's a second grader, has bone cancer. She's been, she's been complaining of knee pain for a while. And she took it to the doctor to have x-rays, an MRI, and biopsy. And they found it in five different small areas. Um, she's starting chemotherapy right away, and she's at Shands UF Pediatric. Um, she, of course, played in, in our basketball league. Her name is Brianna Short. And I want you guys to put her um, on your prayer list. We'll be doing that, too, as well. And um, we're going to believe God to heal her life to heal her body. And, um, and so I want us tonight to pray for Brianna and um, Brianna Short. And I remember her. I, I'm looking at this picture. She was on the Lakers team. And um, that, was, um, that was Willie's team, right, Audrey? So let's, um, let's do this. Let's, let's bow our heads and let's pray for her right now. Father God, we Lift up Brianna to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we pray for her like she's our own daughter, like she's our own sister, God. We pray, God, for her because we know that prayer changes things, God. We know, God, that 
that you're still Jehovah Rophekai healer. And God, we believe in the God and we serve the God that healed in Genesis and Exodus and in, in the books of the Old Testament and also in the miracles that Jesus did. God, we pray, God, that the same miracle power from your word will go and touch Brianna's body even on tonight, God. God, I pray for the doctors. I pray for the nurses. I pray for everybody that will take care of her, God. I pray, God, that you even touch the chemotherapy, God, that as, it, that as it goes through the veins of her body, God, that it brings forth healing and restoration. We come against cancerous cells in her body. We come against every cancer molecule in her body that is attacking her, God, from the sole of her feet, God, to the top of her head. We thank you for healing tonight in her body in the mighty name of Jesus, God. And God, we thank you for a good report tonight, God. We thank you, God, that through this process, God, that you even do something in their family, God. Let this be a time that you draw this family closer to you, God. God, we thank you. We love you. We bless you. And we'll forever give your name glory, honor, and praise. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, give God praise for healing in Brianna's body tonight. So let's keep her in our prayers, everybody. Um, let's keep her in our prayers and let's watch God do some miraculous things. Listen, um, real quickly, even while we're standing, I'm going to give our benediction after, um, after I pray, just a real quick prayer. You, you that have your offering, your tithe, you can just bring it up and sow tonight. Don't forget about all the stuff we got going on, y'all. Uh, we're back here, of course, on Sunday. This is first Sunday, our communion Sunday. Uh, we'll be here worshiping. And don't forget, of course, next week, Christ Central will be, will be with here. Be here with us to honor and to bless God. Real quickly, let's pray. Father, we thank you again for tonight. Bless us, we leave this place with not your presence. And we'll forever give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We love you. God bless you. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful evening. Don't forget, I think the youth are back in the fellowship hall, children over in the children's